Hello everyone and welcome to the session uh, about upgrading from ClickView 1120 uh, from Click Support. My name is Christer Skalberg. Uh, I'm a senior rapid response engineer at Click Support in Lund. Uh, I'm a specialist on ClickView server and infrastructure and I've been with Click since 2010. So I've been there for just a bit over seven years. I started out working on ClickView 9 and have moved through all of the generations that we have produced since. Uh, and I'm here to talk to you about how to upgrade from ClickView 1120 since what's happening right now, uh, as you should be aware, is that ClickView 1120 uh, is coming to end of life on the 31st of March this year. Uh, that means that from that date, we will no longer be offering support for uh, ClickV1120 uh, and uh, we will no longer develop, make any development or provide any bugs, uh, bug fixes for that version. So it will come to end of life, which means that you should be start to thinking about uh, upgrading your ClickV environment if you have not already done so. Uh, and for that reason, I wanted to talk to you about uh, a few considerations you need to take before you do your upgrade. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about the new functionality that we have introduced since ClickView 1120 uh, and how it will affect your experience with ClickView. Maybe not so much about actually the, the, the end user experience, but from an administration standpoint and how the system behaves under the hood, because there has been uh, a few major uh, changes introduced and they lead to a different behavior. Uh, so we want to talk about those. So that's what we're going to try to do today. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, first of all, uh, upgrades are straightforward. Uh, it's, as long as you do, do proper planning, you do proper testing, and you take proper backups, uh, an upgrade is a relatively simple process. Uh, in a small scale environment, it's actually as easy as running the new installer for for ClickView 12.10 or for ClickView November 2017. I will refer to it as 12.20 uh, in this session because that's what everybody been, everybody's been calling it, uh, despite it having a new name. Uh, but running the installer will get you, uh, give you a full update and it will do an in-place upgrade. So all the settings that you have uh, in place will be carried over. Um, but there are a few things to, to take into consideration before you do your upgrade. Uh, and we are extremely proud uh, about uh, ClickView 11, uh, ClickView 12.10 and ClickView 12.20 because they are very good products. They are extremely stable uh, and they are providing lots of uh, improvements on stability, on scalability and, and of and, uh, ease of use over ClickView 11.20, for example. Uh, but to cover the, the, the upgrade process, we have lots and lots of information available online uh, on our help sites. Uh, so your starting point would be help.click.com and then just move into the Clicker branch and you should find all the information you would need uh, in relation to your upgrade. There is a specific section for how to upgrade your environment. Uh, so, so feel free to use them because they are really good and we are trying to cover most of the, the typical setups and scenarios that we uh, have encountered. Uh, that said, uh, there are a few things you need to take into consideration before you do your upgrade. Um, so for one, uh, you need to make sure that your LEF, your license enabler file on the system is up to date. Uh, because the click for upgrade, when, you do an, when you're doing an upgrade to a new major version, we do check your license to make sure that you have a valid license or a valid maintenance agreement with us. Uh, and if your maintenance agreement has expired, then you will not be able to, to move to a new uh, major version. You will still be, we would still be, may, be able to upgrade to new SRs within 11.20, but not to new major releases. So making sure that your LEF is up to date is just one of those easy things to make sure that just go into the QMC and click on update uh, from server and just fetch a new LEF so that you are current on your, on your uh, license enabler file. Uh, doing a cleanup of your system might also be a good idea. Uh, it's, it's a good idea to do some, some basic uh, housekeeping. Go in and, and clear out old log files that you no longer need to keep. There would be very little reason to keep 
click the server log files from the start of time, for example. Uh, you can clean, feel free to clean out old log files, old task logs, all of that stuff that just is cluttering around your, your environment. Might be a good idea to, to clean out your document folders uh, to just make sure that what's in there is what you're actually using today and move old stuff that no longer is needed by the system out of the way or move it into a, to a backup folder somewhere. Uh, always a good step to do when you're doing your upgrade. Um, and then you do a, a backup of your system. Again, we're covering this uh, completely in the, in the help site. Uh, effectively, just want you to, to make a backup of your um, sieve slash program data slash click tech uh, folder so that you have it for reference because it will contain all of the configuration settings and the QVPR for, among other things. So, so just make sure to copy those files away uh, in case you would need to do a, a rollback. Or, of course, uh, if you do a full system backup using whatever backup software you're using in your environment, make sure one of those of complete backups has been run before you start your upgrade so you can revert to, to the earlier version if something should go wrong um, in your environment. If the ser server should crash during the upgrade or something, something unfortunate that would be catastrophic to your click to setup, do a rollback. Uh, something that is also important is to determine if you're using certificate trust between the click view services uh, in your environment. There are choices to be made uh, and it's e very easy to determine. I'll switch over to the QMC so you will be able to see what I'm talking about. Uh, under the About tab in your click view environment, you will see this line, Service Authentication. In my case, I'm using AD Groups, which is the default uh, installation for a, for a ClickView environment, where the service account that runs ClickView services is a member of the ClickView administrators group, and it's a member of the local administrators groups, and that makes the communication between the services work. Uh, there is also an option when you do the setup to, to instead use certificates uh, to, to you create a self-signed certificate that is used for, for encrypting the communication between the services. Uh, if you have done that, you will be prompted during the setup process to remove the old certificates from 11.20 uh, before you do the upgrade because those are not compatible with 12.10 or 12.20. So you will be prompted, but uh, it's good to just determine before so you know what to expect when you're doing your upgrade. Uh, also important, if you are using a slightly bigger environment so that you have a distributed setup where you have maybe split the services between more than one machine or where you have uh, an actual cluster where you have click to services server services clustered or you have the click to distribution service clustered or you have separated them on different machines. Remember to upgrade all the service in your deployment uh, so that you don't end up with something that we have seen for example is if you are using uh, a central IIS server for your access point or for your web server for ClickView, some, some have forgotten to, to upgrade that web server because we need to update uh, the app pool in that one as well. So run the installers on all uh, the machines in your environment and it will do an in-place upgrade of, of all of the services. Uh, and something that is very uh, important to remember. ClickView 12.10 and ClickView 12.20 have been vastly changed from the way 11.20 behaved. Uh, so you should expect things to not behave the same. You should expect them to behave differently, but in a positive way. We have made massive improvements on, on uh, the scalability, for example, how a ClickView server deployment scales and how it loads. Uh, and we have done improvements on how ClickView documents loads into memory just to speed up uh, the end user experience. So you need to expect things to behave differently. Don't expect them to behave the same because they won't. Um, so you've done your upgrade, everything went smooth, all the services are back up and running. Uh, so what are the changes that we have been doing uh, between 11.20 and the later releases? Well, to start with, uh, your management console will be slightly different. There are no revolutionary changes. Uh, it still looks pretty much the same, but we've added a few things um, just to make your life easier and to reflect the behavior that, for example, Publisher now does. Um, so if we move back to the management console, one of the changes that we did, uh, it's a small one, but uh, it's, it makes life easier for any administrator. 
previously when you expanded task details for a task in the QMC, you would get to this page, you would see the task details, you would see the task history when it's been running, you would see the task log straight in, out in the, in the QMC. But we've also added this tag. Uh, there's a new, new uh, tab in here. So you can actually vis visit the document log, which was not previously possible. This is a new setting that has been introduced in 1220 or the ClickView November 2017 release. Uh, and it helps just making life easier for you as an administrator for ClickView. Uh, it's one of those small things. Uh, but we've, we're trying to make the product more intuitive, easier to work with. That's, that's always something that we do. So you, this is now uh, something that you will find uh, in the QMC. Um, so going back to to other small but but good changes, um, we also have changed the task statuses. You see, I'm I'm only reflecting two of them uh, in my environment. The normal ones that you would be seeing in 11.20 would be waiting, running, or failed. Those are normally the ones that that would be present. We have added a fourth one. It's now called queued uh, to reflect tasks that have been triggered but have not yet started running, uh, which would happen in 11.20 as well, but they would be reflected as running. For example, if a, a task would trigger but not would not be able to, to find a free reload ending to run, uh, it would still show as running in the QMC. That task will now in 12.20 and 12.10 be reflected as queued. It's triggered, it has started, but it has not yet been given the resources to run. So it's in a queued state. So small changes, but they are more reflecting the actual status of, of a task. And we'll come back to the publisher uh, in a few minutes. Uh, so again, small changes that are v immediately visible. Um, up front, everything looks pretty much the same. The access point looks the same uh, as it did before in, in older releases. Um, as mentioned, script log is now available in the task details, introduced in 12.20. It's not present in 12.10. Um, task now also shows for which document. So previously, you would see a task name. Now, within a parent parenthesis, we also see that the document name that that task reflects uh, upon. Uh, we have introduced something called a graceful shutdown of the ClickView distribution service. So let's switch back, back and show that one. Uh, it's something that has been kind of a an, of an challenge before. When you wanted to shut down your publisher, uh, but you didn't want to leave any tasks running, for example, that was always a bit of a hassle to get done in 11.20. You would have to monitor, do I still have any reload engines running? And when all of them were finished, you could you could uh, stop your distribution service if you needed to do changes. So, but from from uh, click with 12.10 and onwards, there is now actually a power button uh, in the QMC under the services for the distribution service. So if you hit this power button, it will do what we call a graceful uh, shutdown, uh, which means that the distribution service will be told to stop but it will wait until all tasks are uh, have stopped running or are completed, and it will not start any more tasks uh, until uh, it's been shut down. So this is one of those improvements. It's a minor thing, but it makes life easier for everyone, and uh, it's a good step for for enterprise environments. Um, but uh, under the hood, however, uh, with ClickView 12.10 and ClickView 12.20, uh, 12 things are, are there, there are major differences between the architectures between 11.20 and the newer releases. Uh, and they will uh, make a bigger impact on your environment that you need to be aware of. Uh, for example, uh, something that was introduced in, in 12.10 is that the access point is now feature aware, which means that when you load access point or when, when a user goes to an access point, uh, the web server will now ask the browser for the user to say, hey, what features are available on your client? So if you have um, a hybrid device where, with, with both mouse, keyboard and, and touch, we will switch on on those functions for you. Uh, so, so the access point is now feature aware, uh, which would affect how the, the end the user experience behaves. Um, something that is also a change, not immediately visible, uh, but we now open the ClickView documents. When they're loaded into memory, 
they are now open in a columnar way instead of uh, the old row based way uh, that they are which is how they are stored on disk so we expand them in a columnar way uh, which leads to an increase in memory usage during the, the initial open of a document. So the memory footprint of both ClickView Desktop uh, and ClickView Server when you're opening a document will be bigger. We will use more memory, but then once the document is opened and loaded into memory, the memory consumption will drop back down. But there is that initial peak where we expand the document where it requires more memory than it did previously. Uh, and this will be related to to the data structure of your document, how big that different is. Uh, but expect click with the desktop and click with server to use more memory when you're opening a document as compared to 1120. Um, another small change uh, in 1220, when you do send to Excel, it now natively uh, does a send to Excel using uh, <laughs> what Microsoft have been using for a long time, the XLSX. Um, file uh, ending or file format will be used by default when you do a send to Excel. Um, something that might affect some customers, I won't go into great details about this one. This was changed in 12.10 already, but alternate states now require a state definition for every expression that's, that's contained within an alternate state. They need to be defined as belonging to a, to a particular state. Uh, this is made. This is a change that was introduced because previously the, the behavior was uh, a bit unpredictable. Which um, expression would be expanded in a given state when you when you were switching between uh, alternate states in a document? This has now been changed. There is lots of documentation available for this, both in the release notes and available uh, in articles from Click Support and on our portals. So, if you're using alternate states in your documents might be a good idea to, to read up on those changes. Uh, it's something that you would need to change uh, in, your, in your script uh, for those documents. Um, again, lots of things have changed under the hood and there will be many of these that uh, start with more changes under the hood because we did actually do lots of changes in the background. They are not immediately visible but they are making a big impact on how the product behaves for the better, all of them. We have tried to improve the product in every single way we can. Uh, because ClickView is still very much an alive product and we're trying to build it to be the best it, it has ever been. And we are extremely proud of where we are with the product right now. Uh, one change that, uh, one setting that was present in 11.20 uh, was a setting called QVS Timeout. Uh, this one sits in the web server configuration file uh, and it allows for it, it's, it defines how long the web server will wait for the ClickView server service to do, uh, to render a, an, an image or render a, a chart, for example. So if you have a very big chart that requires lots of computation to, to, to render, and it, it would take longer than 60 seconds, uh, the web server would do a timeout, and that chart would not be visible on the, on, in, the, in the web client that could be altered by using this setting called QVS timeout and you could increase it to whatever number of seconds you needed for your short for your expression or your chart to render on click server side before it, it arrived on the web server side uh, that one has been replaced uh, with a new setting called socket timeout in seconds uh, so that one can be added to the configuration file for the web server uh, and you can now achieve the same thing but it's a new setting again this is mentioned in the release notes for, for uh, Click with 12.20 and there are articles available from, for, from Click Support on how to, to make this change. This one also is, is a, possible to use in the distribution service, for example, where uh, if you're doing a distribution of a very large document from your Click with publisher to your Click with server service, uh, and that sending of the file uh, at the end stage of the distribution when the QVS is, the Click with server is saving the file to disk. Uh, if that took longer than 60 seconds, you would, you would encounter a timeout. This setting also uh, can be used to, to allow for more time if you're distributing a large document and it needs more time than 60 seconds to save to disk. This one can also be used to do the same thing. I will show it in a configuration file um, when we come up, when we come to the publisher and how, how that works. Um, also, in uh, new, new a new change that's been introduced in ClickView 12.20 or in the ClickView 
November 2017 release, uh, is a new shared file format. Um, shared files have always been uh, a bit of a, an, it's been a target area for us to improve the functionality of the shared files in previous versions. We did lots of work on that uh, during the lifetime of ClickView 1120, as anyone who has been with us for a while knows. Uh, we had we suffered from shared file corruption uh, all the way up to, to SR5 for 1120. Uh, then we redid the shared file functionality in SR5, and that resolved most of those issues. But it also spawned uh, an idea that we should probably reconsider on how we are reading and, and addressing these shared files. The shared file that sits right next to a ClickView document in a ClickView server contains all user-generated context. So if a user creates their own uh, in ClickView, it will be stored in the, in the shared file. Any bookmarks that are being generated are stored in the shared file. So, so all, all user-generated content um, or a session state that the user wants to come back to uh, are stored in those shared files. And if they go corrupted, all the stuff that uh, an end user has generated will be invisible. So with the introduction of ClickView 1220 or November 2017, we are uh, we have introduced a new shared file format called T-Shared. Uh, the T-Shared file format uh, is a transactional uh, shared file. We are covering this uh, in the help site. We are covering this in the in the release notes for uh, these releases. Um, but it's a new and way more resilient shared file format, which is transactional. This is on by default uh, when you move to uh, to 12.20. Uh, so any new document that is introduced for uh, after you upgrade it will by default get a new T shared file created. But uh, if you, all your old shared files that are moved over between the installation from 11.20 to, to 12.20 or um, would remain shared, uh, dot shared, but you can convert them to the new format. Uh, and you can also do cleanup and, and work with the shared files using uh, the ClickView server functionality. All of this is covered on the help site on how to work with your shared files. These, you should find the links, These all of these links should be uh, available just below the recording uh, on our webpage. Uh, so you can easily find them and, and look through them and, and see how you can work with your shared files and how the new, uh, you can convert your old shared files to the new T-shared um, file format. Uh, one of the major changes that was uh, introduced already in 12.10 uh, is the distribution service. Uh, so if you have a licensed publisher, uh, you will see major differences in how it behaves uh, if you upgrade from, from 11.20. Um, and we have we have worked with it because this is one of the workhorses in the in the ClickView family. The, the, the publisher uh, is a very popular product, and it's being used to run massive amounts of reloads and distributions in in many ClickView environments. So we have tried to make it better, smarter, uh, and faster in every way we can. Um, and one of the first things that we started looking at was the load balancing. If you have more than one click with publisher uh, in your environment. Those, the load balancing between the nodes has now been completely uh, redone with the introduction of 12.10, uh, where we moved effectively the queuing of tasks to, to, this, to, to sit with the management service. Uh, in 11.20, if you triggered a task uh, and there were no free resources, uh, or immediately upon triggering a task, we would do a load balancing evaluation. So we would see which of the nodes in this environment has the most free resources. And then we would send the task to that node. Uh, but if there were no free engine on that node to run the task, uh, it would just sit in a queue local to that node. Uh, so it would, could be waiting for a free engine on that node for a long time, even if other nodes freed up and had more resources available and could run that task, it would be stuck in a task local to the node. That queuing system has now been moved centrally. So now, if you trigger a task, uh, we do a load evaluation and see, OK, is, is there any node in the publisher cluster that can run this task? Do, do they have uh, a free engine, or are they not in an overloaded state? Uh, 
okay, then we just fire the task to that node. But if all the nodes uh, in the cluster are full on reload engines or are in an overloaded state, the task will be triggered, but it will end up in a queued state and it will be sent to the first node that uh, where, where resources become free. Um, and that's where the overload protection kicks in. Uh, one of the major sources for reload failures in ClickView has always been um, an overloaded ClickView publisher. And so if the, if the machine is running at 100% CPU uh, for a long time or at 100% memory, tasks would start failing. And that could happen if you're running a few tasks that are very intense or if you're running uh, many tasks in parallel, you would end up in that scenario where tasks would start failing due to a resource starvation. Uh, so we, we decided to, to, to try and, and fix that problem. Uh, so we introduced an overload protection where the publisher by default will not start any more tasks if uh, it determines itself to already be fully loaded. Uh, so we'll just show you uh, what we mean by that uh, by going here. Uh, so you will see these are the default overload limits for a ClickView publisher. What I'm showing here is the qvdistributionservice.exe.config file. The, the, the file that sits local on all distribution service servers uh, in an environment. And it contains the parameters for that govern how a publisher works. Uh, by default, the overload limit, uh, limits are if the CPU is at 75% or more, uh, or if the memory is at 90% or more. Uh, at this point, publisher will determine itself to be in an overloaded state and it will no longer trigger any more ta or accept any more tasks to be run before it gets back down below these limits. Uh, so this is a major change between uh, 11.20 and 12.10 and 12.20. Um, so for example, this would lead to uh, a bit of frustration for administrators and we admit to not being exactly crystal clear on how this works. Um, so you would end up, you would have tasks that would end up in a queued state um, instead of being triggered when you have, you are expecting them to. Uh, previously they might be triggered, you might be stated running uh, in the QMC, they might not get an engine but they would still be in a state of status of running. Uh, but now they would be in a queued state which would indicate that there is no reload engine that can, can uh, service this request, which might change your scheduling. So a task will be triggered on the right correct starting time, the starting time that you have selected, but it will not actually be run until there are free resources to run that, that reload. Uh, of course you can uh, modify these settings if you want to mimic more how uh, how 11.20 behaved, you can of course raise your overload protection limits to 100 and 100. At that point all tasks would be immediately starting, but you might end up in a resource starvation issue like you did before. Uh, so we introduced this to make sure that we get a higher uh, success rate when running tasks. Um, and it's, it's a good change. It, it allows the publishers to be smarter and do a more intelligent load balancing. Uh, and it's a, it's a very good feature, but it takes some getting used to. Uh, and it, you need to be aware of it when you upgrade because it will change the behavior. Um, something that is not turned on by default, uh, but it's an, also an option that you can explore uh, with 12.10 and 12.20 uh, is something called publisher groups. Uh, it will not immediately affect how your your upgraded system will behave, but it gives you more flexibility and more options when you move to 12.10 and 12.20. Uh, publisher groups is, is effectively a way of taking a click with publisher cluster and breaking it down to smaller segments uh, and allowing for different size servers, for example, to run different amount of tasks in parallel. So if you have a small server, you can say, okay, this small server should run six tasks in parallel, while my big server should run 12 tasks in parallel. That is now possible to do within a, a ClickView server, a ClickView publisher cluster due to the introduction of the publisher group. So it allows for differing size servers, it allows for different amounts of tasks per server, it allows for prioritized tasks. You can now say that this task should be prioritized, it should be run uh, 
alone on a server because this is my main reload. I need this one to be done before anything else kicks off. I don't want to trigger any more tasks before this one is done. You can actually now make that happen uh, in, in Publisher. Um, and you can also select your tasks to be dedicated to a specific server or to a specific a publisher group. So in, we are allowing for a lot more flexibility uh, in Publisher uh, with the introduction of 12.10 and 12.20. So they are, again, these are massive improvements that are available to you as a customer uh, when you upgrade. So feel free to use them, play around with them, because they are giving us lots more flexibility in configuring and in running uh, Publisher. Uh, of course, these changes uh, come at a cost. There, there is always a cost. If you want something to be faster, something um, there is a cost for that. Uh, what we have determined is that it's more vital for a click with 12.10 or a 12.20 environment to have a low, light, low latency file system. This will, of course, be more relevant if you're running a, a large-scale click with deployment. If you have a click with server cluster, or if you have a click with publisher cluster, or if you have both, uh, you would have your, your click with server uh, root folder or your click with publisher app data folder on a centralized location, because that's what's needed for a cluster. Uh, and those centralized locations, those file shares, now need to be up to, to uh, the job, because the product has become so much more efficient uh, in how it deals with um, with access to file systems. Uh, so we have started to realize that if you are running a very small virtual server, for example, as a file server, that might no longer be up to the to the task of delivering files uh, for a click to 12.10 or a click to 12.20 deployment. For example, the new notification system. Uh, that sits in Publisher, which is where we keep track of the running status of a task or where we do uh, the updates of triggers or where we record the results of a task. Uh, in in 11.20 that was effectively doing a, a cascade. You would update one file that would trigger the update of the next file, uh, while in 12.10 and 12.20 we touch way more files in parallel, so there will be more more files accessed in parallel in the background. Uh, so the centralized storage needs to be up to that load. Uh, and of course, since we are doing lots of work on performance optimization, everybody wants more speed out of their click deployment. That comes at a cost. Uh, we are using more resources. Uh, and we are not making any excuses for that. We need proper disk access. Uh, so what was previously it might have been sufficient for 11.20, uh, might no longer be sufficient for for 12.10 or 12.20. So be aware of this, because it's something that might introduce um, task failures. It might introduce a problem with opening documents on the access point. Um, so it's, it's something to be aware of. Your file system needs to be up to the load. If you want um, more help in, investigations, uh, in investigating such an issue, that would be when you contact Click Support so we can help you investigate and determine if what you're seeing after upgrading is actually due to uh, a latency in your file system. We can, we can help determine that. Um, other small changes that were introduced in, in ClickView 12.20, uh, the November release, uh, is a no, new load script evaluator. Uh, this load script evaluator that we introduced, the, the BNF script evaluator, uh, has been present in ClickSense uh, for about nine months uh, in all of the releases since. Uh, but it's a bit, it's it's a script evaluator that's a bit more strict. It it requires a bit uh, a better syntax structure in your load scripts, which might might mean that if you do an upgrade from 11.20 to 12.10, uh, sorry, 12.20, you could see single scripts or, or some of your scripts failing due to a script uh, failure uh, that worked previously, um, because there might be an outdated formatting in those scripts that has been carried over from older versions and now long, no longer evaluates correctly uh, using the BNF script evaluator. Um, good thing is that if you would encounter this, you can turn off the BNF script evaluator uh, on a document or on a system level. 
so if if a particular script or on a few fails, you could disable the BNF script evaluator for only those reload scripts. You could could let those those documents run with the old script evaluator, and everything would be back to to running operations. You could then make a copy of those documents, walk through the script, work through it, and make sure that it it now works properly uh, in 12.20, and then reintroduce the BNF script evaluator. Uh, this is covered uh, to a very large extent in uh, the release notes for the November release. Uh, we cover many of the things that I'm talking about in these release notes, but we might not be it's hard to determine how, from when you're reading this, it might be hard to determine, okay, how will this affect me? And that's what we try to accomplish with this session. We want to make it more relevant for you as a customer. We want to explain the possible uh, changes in behavior that you would experience due to these changes. Uh, so, for example, for the the, uh, the the release notes covers the shared file cleaning or the shared file um, functionality. It covers the export to Excel XS format that I've been mentioning. And it also covers the BNF script, script reload mode, where you can, it tells you how to disable this on system level or on uh, individual script level. So this is all completely doable, and it's, it's relatively easy to do. <coughs> um, so for, for your reload script, um, this one is an extremely basic one, but you would add this tag to the top of your reload script and that would turn off the new BNF script load evaluator uh, for that script specifically. But again, all of this information is available in the release notes and uh, in articles from Click Support and or the Click Support portals. Um, but it's something that, that would introduce a change for you, it's something that you would experience when you when you start running your, your new deployment. <clears throat> Scripts that executed previously might no longer execute properly. Uh, the BNF script evaluator is uh, also something that we have introduced to, to be able to do a, a better, um, we want the, the result of a reload script to be uh, exactly as expected, so, so it's for, for data integrity purposes. A stricter evaluator sh will return uh, a much higher accuracy uh, in the script. So that being said, um, that is about what I'm. That's just about everything I wanted to cover because these topics are the ones that we see coming up after a reload. Uh, we get support cases on them, so we want to give you the chance to, to review this material before you even start your upgrade, to be aware of the behavioral changes and the structural changes that we have done uh, and how they would, would affect your environment. So the keys, key takeaways uh, that you should have gotten from this uh, uh, session, if I've done my job correctly, would be that ClickVin current releases that being click with 12.10 or click with 12.20 behaves differently than 11.20 or earlier releases. Um, you might need to change some settings to, to if you want to get back to more of, of something that would be more similar to the 11.20 environment. Because by default, the, load, the overload protection in Publisher is turned on and it will create, it will give you uh, better uh, reload success rates, but it will also affect your scheduling. So if you want to get back to your previous scheduling, uh, you would need to adjust the, the overload protection, for example. Um, and that's because Publisher is smarter and more capable. It can do more. Uh, it, it is capable of processing tasks in a quicker and, and more efficient manner. Uh, and for that reason, we are trying to make it also keep within the boundaries. We want to make the, those reloads be successful. Uh, so it's smarter and it's more capable, uh, but it comes at a cost. Uh, so that would affect how tasks are triggered, for example. They are triggered, but when they're triggered, we do a load evaluation and see, can this, uh, can this task actually be, be successfully run at this stage or is the system already in a, an overloaded state where we would suspect that uh, this task might fail due to a resource division. Then we will trigger it but we will set it to a queued state and it will be run when the resources become available to run it. Uh, and the file storage uh, accessibility. We, we are 
we are more it's more crucial for ClickView in 12.10 and 12.10 releases to have quick uh, and uninterrupted file storage access. Um, so it's something to be aware of. Uh, your file system needs to be up to that. Uh, you would see typical error messages would be uh, in the ClickView distribution service it would fail to update uh, task result files for example or in the ClickView server uh, it would be failing to reach and read the PDO files or the shared files on disk. If you see indications of that, it might be an indication that your file storage might be suffering uh, and might be needed, might need more resources to handle all of those requests. That's pretty much it. Uh, that's what I wanted to cover with you. Uh, if you have any further questions, reach out to Click Support uh, related to the upgrade. We will try to help you in any way, shape. Uh, we can to make sure that your upgrade from ClickV1120 is successful. Uh, if you need actual on-site help uh, in, in getting that upgrade accomplished, reach out to your account manager, talk to Click Consulting uh, so that they can help you analyze your system, where it's currently at and where it needs to be, uh, and help you with that upgrade if needed. We have the resources uh, available for you to make this successful. There is lots, also lots of, of knowledge available on our community uh, and on the help site on how the products behave after the upgrade. Uh, with that said, thank you very much from me and from the Click support team. Uh, and we wish you lots of success with your future ClickFit deployment.